What's going on? This is Dylan Butterbob Manoa Chocolate. This is another episode of Craft Chocolate TV. And what we're gonna talk about today is about equipment and what scale we would start at if we were to redo everything. And I would not do it the way I did before. That was um, crazy, really small. I had no idea what I was doing or what I was getting myself into. There is a certain size that would be really uh, pleasant and more profitable to start at because in the beginning you're so so busy the last thing you want to be doing is loading four pound grinders uh, and eight of them at that so I put together a list and these are the things that if Manoa chocolate were to redo it we would start this way so the first one is obviously roasting I would start with an oven even though I'm not a huge fan of oven roasting. It just is a, a simple way to start. You can put it anywhere. You can still control it. Um, you know, the, the more trays you can fit in there, the better. But yeah, I would start with an oven until the proof of concept worked out because coffee roasters are super expensive. And like used coffee roasters that do 12 kilos, you can be lucky if you get it for 30 grand. So starting with an oven, even if it was brand new at 2,500 bucks, it's a good place to start. The next thing are, uh, well, obviously cracking and winnowing. I really like the winnower we have now. I would start with it. If I didn't start with this one, which was from Maru, the chocolate maker in Vietnam, I would build my own again. That was not a bad place to start either. It was pretty simple, it was really affordable, and the concept of winnowing hasn't changed. The shell is light, the nib is heavy, separate those so vacuums back massagers we used a bicycle and scaled up to a drill but uh, there's one called an aether that you can get from chocolate alchemy i've never seen it i've never used it i hear good things i don't think it's super expensive so i would start with something like that or make your own in fact making your own is almost a rite of passage but you're sacrificing time the next thing after cracking and winnowing is grinding there's a lot of whetstone grinders. I would start with a whetstone grinder again. Uh, Coco Town, Santa, Diamond, all of these whetstone grinders, there's different levels of quality in those. I'd actually go straight to India. You can get them for like two grand straight from India. So I'd get two whetstone grinders that are around 20, 25 kilos each straight from India. I don't know exactly the source, but if you look around enough, you could find it. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna pay eight to $10,000 for something in the US. So I would go to India if I could and redo it all. I wouldn't stay there forever though, but it is a good place to start with whetstone grinders. So after whetstone grinding or melanging, I would then, I wouldn't hand temper, I wouldn't use a double boiler, I wouldn't uh, use one of those little open choco vision things. I would go for a continuous tempering machine. It's a game changer. Even the little one we have now, we still use it every now and then. It's called an Aura from FBM, and it works really well once we dialed in the kinks. I mean, craft chocolate is something that is not industrial in the sense there's no like soy lecithin. We don't add that. Uh, we do add extra cocoa butter, but we don't add a lot of extra cocoa butter, which would make tempering the last step a lot easier. So the continuous tempering machine works well if I couldn't start with an Aura. I, I would actually try and do one size up, which is called their Prima from FBM. And if I had enough money, I'd actually do something like a, uh, a Gami or a Diva, the machine we use now, Selmi. Selmi makes nice machines or even FBM's Unica. We like the Gamis. It's just worked well for us. It's not saying it's better or worse than any of the other ones, but the Aura I think is around $10,000. The bowl holds about four kilos at a time and it continuously tempers so that you can load, you can just put your mold under there and it'll continually deposit the perfect amount of chocolate that you've programmed into it. Continuous tempering machines are amazing. We figured out how to make a thousand bars in a day with it. So we would feed in chocolate from another machine or a big holding tank into the Aura and we could just keep molding all day long. Now, obviously you wanna graduate away from that. We would love an automated molding line, which is something we're really hoping for uh, in the near future. So after tempering, one of the easiest ways to cool is just a double door refrigerator. We have these true refrigerators or any, any model really that is reliable. And we noticed we didn't even have to add the thermostat in there to make it more like 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We could leave it at 32 and just because you're opening the door so often loading molds, it still works just fine. So those are 
pretty much the ways we would start. It's about $25,000 round up because you have to do shipping and nothing ever works out perfectly. So call it 30 grand. And that should be a really nice equipment setup to begin with where you can actually be profitable and hopefully take a day or two off a week at that scale. I hope this has been helpful. Let us know. We're really happy to help and see our industry grow. That's a, a big part of what we're doing with Craft Chocolate TV. Thanks for being part of it. Aloha. Thank you.